welcome to video 2.2, Preventing Running Through Walls. In the previous video we noticed that we could walk right through walls. We are also not able to step onto the stairs of our model. In this video we will look at colliders. This is geometry that is used to check if objects overlap, pass through each other. In this video we will add colliders to our project and also briefly discuss other possible colliders. In game engines, geometry is not automatically set up to collide prevent extensive collision calculations. By only adding colliders where needed, we can limit these calculations. Let's check where we have arrived after our last video. In the project tab, look at our model. Select our model and look at the inspector to adjust the importer settings. We have to activate generate colliders and press apply. This generates a mesh collider for all the meshes in the model. You can see that every object that has a mesh now also has a mesh collider component. We can check that it works by pressing play now and walk through our building. Now we will automatically stop when we bump against the wall. So in most cases we want our architectural models to have colliders for every mesh and this is easily set by the importer. However, there are cases where this is overkill. If you have very detailed geometry, such as plants or shares or even doorknobs, they might slow down Unity considerably. In some cases, our controller might even get stuck. It is possible to be more selective and disable certain colliders. If you have a model with closed doors, or you have a wall where you want to pass through, we can disable their collider, which would allow us to walk through them again. While this is not very realistic, it solves at least a problem in the initial project when you are not able to enter a door. So what about regular Unity geometric objects, such as cube, cylinder or sphere? They all have a default collider applied. Add a few cubes. Maybe a sphere. If you press play now, you can see that the sphere will prevent us from walking through. Same with the cube. If you look at the properties of these objects, you see that the sphere has a sphere collider and the cube has a box collider. Each game object can only have one collider component of each type applied. But you can combine a box collider and a sphere collider for more control over their collisions. Collision detection takes quite some resources and slows down the scene. You can replace complex colliders in many cases with a basic box or capsule collider. You can remove the mesh collider or disable it in the FBX importer settings for a model. Convex colliders, such as box, cylinder, or sphere, are easy to calculate. Concave ones, such as the mesh collider, are more demanding and should be disabled or replaced where possible. You can create a compound collider by combining different collider types in one object or adding multiple objects together, each with their own collider. Since collider geometry is invisible, it poses no visual problems, yet still ensures that we steer where the user can walk. Many games apply invisible walls to prevent users from stepping outside an allowed area. This is easily done in Unity by adding a cube game object and disabling the mesh renderer component. The detached box collider will still prevent objects from passing through. This concludes our second video on navigating, where we added colliders to our project and also discussed how and when to use them. Remember, you can disable or even replace colliders to fine tune the game performance. The next video will discuss an alternative character setup.